problem 216. In this case, we have a force F, and we know this force S goes along this line, and we are given the magnitude, right? The magnitude of that force is 600 pounds. And they tell us that this force has an angle of 60 with the plane. As you see, these lines here indicate this is parallel to Y and parallel to X. So they are giving us the angle between the force and the plane Y, X. Of course, is, this is a negative X. Let me write it right here, negative X. And then they are giving us the direction of that component in that plane with the y-axis and with the x-axis. They are giving us a pole and this, this force is acting at the end of that pole. So we want to find, as you see in the PowerPoint, the force x along AO parallel, right? Or let me write it like that. Force component parallel to A. O A and F component perpendicular to O A. So we want to find how much this force is pulling the pole, how much of this force is acting perpendicular of the pole. So how do we find a component along another vector? As you recall, so let, I'm going to call this force OA, and this is force perpendicular to OA. So the force OA is not a vector, it's a scalar because it's along a direction, is the force scalar, the unit vector or the direction of the vector or the pole OA. So First of all, we have to find the force F as a vector. We have the magnitude, and they are giving us the angles to find the direction. So let's find first this uh, vector, and then we will find the other vector. So here, this vector, how do we want to find it? So we will have a X component, a Y component, and a C component. So let's find each of those. As I said, you can project this force along this line over here, and I will call that the horizontal component of that force. And here, I can also decompose that in this direction, and that will be the vertical component of that force. So you always have to think about either going to the little roads or going to the main highway or going to the diagonal or going to the components, so to say. So the, the horizontal component will be equals to that force. And as you see, this is a right triangle. And so therefore, the adjacent will be found by multiplying for the cosine of the angle, cosine of 60. And the vertical component will be 600, which is the magnitude of the vector, times sine of 60. And as you see, this vertical is already parallel to C, so we can already say that this is C, so we already found that one. The horizontal component is in the plane x, y, so we can further decompose this force to find fx and fy. So from here, we can see that fx will be equals to. So fx, let me see which color will I use. So fx is along this line, and as you see, this is this angle right here of this triangle, which is also a right triangle, is 30. So this here that is parallel to x is the opposite side of the triangle. So it's the sine of 30. So to get this component, which is parallel to x, will be the component, the horizontal component that I just found, times sine of 30. 
and the y component, which will be this one right here, will be that horizontal component, which is that, this diagonal, times the cosine of 30. So finally, I can write that the force will be equals to my x component, which is the horizontal component, which is 600 cosine of 60 times sine of 60, of 30, sorry. Then the y component, which is the horizontal again, times cosine of 30 in j, plus uh, the C1 here, which is already 600 sine of 60. Okay, just let's check our sign, because as you see, this is pointed towards the back. So actually, I already said at the beginning that this is the negative x-axis. So here, this component, when it decomposes in x, we have to add a negative value, a negative sign over here. Let me add negative value here, okay? So we can calculate that. You know that the cosine of 60 is 1 half, the sine of 30 is 1 half, the cosine of 60 is 1 half, the cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, and so forth, and sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. So we already found, I'm going to substitute and do the multiplications, and I have the results right here, right? So there will be 150 I plus 259.8 in J plus 519.6 in K. And all that is in pounds. So we were able to find our first vector. Remember that we are trying to solve this function, so we were able to find this vector. To find this vector, we have to do a unit vector is always, as you recall, is the vector OA. In this case, this is just a, a position vector of the point A divided by the magnitude. And here we are given all the dimensions where the point A is located. And as you see, it's located at negative 4 in I, positive 4 in J, and positive 2 in K. And this is divided by the magnitude, which is equals to 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. This is a 16 plus 16 plus 4, that's 36, so that gives me 6 underneath. So that, and let me write that down. This is a unit vector, let me write it with a little hat. So that will be 4 divided by uh, 6, which is give me negative 2 thirds in I, plus 2 thirds in J, plus 1 third in K. So, as you see, we were able to find also the second vector, which is this one right here. Now, with these two vectors, we are able to do the dot product, therefore, if along the component of this force along the pole will be equals to this vector, let me write it down, scalar, right, a dot product, this vector. If I do this product, as you remember that dot product we will do i dot i plus j dot j plus k dot k and this is a scalar. So when do we do that will be 150 times two thirds plus 259.8 times two thirds plus 519 plus one third. And that gives me a value of 446 pounds. This is the component 
of the force parallel or along the pole OE. Good, so how do we find the perpendicular component? As you know, well, something that is parallel, something that is perpendicular, right? So this will be the parallel, this will be the perpendicular, and this is the resultant force, right? So what are we going to do? Here we know that the resultant force will be equals to square, will be equals to the parallel component plus the perpendicular component. So to find the perpendicular component, what we will do is that the perpendicular component will be equals to the square root of the resultant force square minus the component that is a parallel component, which is this one right here. So what we have to find first is this resultant force, which is this one right here. And then we want to find the magnitude. Uh, well, actually the magnitude is given, right? It's 600, so this is equals to 600 square minus this one right here. And this value for the perpendicular component is this then just 400 pounds. So this is the perpendicular. So we have to think about that we have this pole. Let me just draw a little bit the pole over here. So we have this pole over here. And then if we look at that in a b-dimensional, so we have this force over here, and then we have one component that is along, that is parallel, and then we have one component that is perpendicular to that. And that, of course, as I said, we have a right triangle right here, and that's why I use just Pythagoras. And this is the solution of this problem.